Hi, in this trade cam session, we're going to look at a method to determine reaction order by using the half-life method. To use this method, we need to plot a graph of concentration. The concentration over here is for the reaction versus time. Question will give you a table like this in which you can have the time and also the concentration of the reactant. If you notice, the concentration of the reactant will decrease. And that makes sense because in a reaction, let's say involving reactant A to make product B, that reactant will be decreased in size in order for product B to be formed. So when you see table like this, concentration and time, you do know that you would be able to use this set of data to plot a graph. And from that graph, you can use the half-life analysis to identify the order of reaction. So when you want to plot a graph, you need to plot a graph of concentration of the reactant on the axis right here versus the time taken for the concentration of the reactant to decrease. If you have a graph of a straight line going down like this, when you see the shape of this graph is straight line going down like this, concentration versus time, that will be a zero order reaction. For first order reaction, you will have a curve from the initial concentration and when the concentration of the reactant decreases, it will have a curve trend. And the two axes over here, this is denoting the half-life. This is the first half-life, that is the second half-life. The initial concentration is 1.0, so if you want to make that half you're going to get 0 0.5 so the time taken for the concentration to drop by half from 1.0 will be about for this example 20 minutes or 20 seconds or 20 hour depending on the units of your time and for the second half life that is when you gonna make 0 0.5 for this example to go half which is 0 0.25 and it will take the same amount of time to do that it will take about 20 minutes or 20 second or 20 hours depending on the units of your time so that is first order so I'm just gonna label that that is your first half-life and that is the second half-life. We can say that for first order reaction, the half-life values are constant throughout the reaction. So you can imagine if we're going to take half of 0 0.25 it will go about 20 minutes or 20 seconds as well 20 hours depending on the units of your time okay for second order reaction it will also going to have a curve trend but the difference over here is on the half-life this is the first half-life Okay, and then when you look at the second half-life, that is double to the first half-life. So that is the second half-life. So when you look at the first and second half-life and even the third half-life, 
for second order reaction it is not constant okay so second order reaction will have a second um, half-life values that are not constant throughout the reaction so that's how you're going to be differentiating between the first order shape for concentration versus time with the second order shape for concentration versus time first or order like this is curve but the half-life values are constant throughout the reaction but for second order the half-life values are not constant throughout the reaction so i'm just going to write a little note over here for second order the half-life values are not constant throughout the reaction so do remember the concentration versus time plots for first and second orders they have the same shape they have curve going down shape however for the first order the half-life values are constant throughout the reaction so it will be the same for first second third and so on on the other hand, for second order reaction, the half-life values are not, I repeat, are not constant throughout the reaction. So the half-life for the first one and the second one and the third one, they are going to be different for second order reaction. So that's how you're going to identify uh, which one is going to be. Is it going to be first or second? If you have a curve graph for concentration versus time. So let's have a look at a example over here. So the question wants you to use the experimental data in this table for reactant A to be converted into B. And we're going to use this to determine the order of reaction. When you have this given to you, you have to look at the data carefully. Remember just now when we introduce you to this video, this is the table that you need in order for you to plot the concentration of reactant versus time. And you can do the half-life analysis to identify the order. You have time and the concentration of reactant. But in this example, you have time However, in that column, you have the concentration of your product being formed. So you have to be careful about this. So that is referring to your product. In this case, we cannot use these data right away. But what we need to do is we need to modify the table a little bit. Okay. So for this case, we have to modify the table so that we will be able to get the concentration of the reactant. For reaction kinetics, for half-life, for anything that is related to this topic, we always can look at the concentration of the reactant. Okay, so when you modify the table, you have this part over here. Okay, remember, this one just now is for your product, and we cannot use this number down here. We cannot use that for the plotting, but now we have got the concentration of your reactant at zero minutes. Of course, you don't have that being formed yet, so the initial concentration will be 23 and then from 23 you minus with whatever being formed over here you get the concentration of a remain so you do the same thing for the whole thing over here then you get the data that you need to plot a graph when we plot this graph you have a graph shape curve going down 
remember, you need to have that label. That one, you have to label this axis with the units. Okay. And also, you have to label the time with the units. That is very important. You will get one mark for that one. And automatically, you will have the shape, correct shape. So when you analyze the half-life, that is the first half-life. And that is the second half-life over here. And when you look at it, for the first half-life, it will take about 50, 46 minutes, sorry. And then for the second half-life, it takes about 92 minutes. So when you look at that trend, you know that the half-life for the reaction are not constant. Okay, so when that is not constant and that is in a curved shape, the order of reaction would be second order. Okay, so this one will be second order. So this is how you're going to use the half-life methods to identify the order of reaction.